Okay. So this is the Hamiltonian constraint. Let me finish. Well, one, one of the most important progress of the point gravity in uh, back in 90s is, is the quantization of this Hamiltonian constraint. Uh, that's one of the most important progress in, in, in quantum gravity in the entire area of quantum gravity. The reason is that um, before the quantum gravity, nobody can uh, really quantize the Hamiltonian constraint. So there was uh, very early, back in 70s or 60s, and Wheeler and De Witt uh, had a proposal to quantize this Hamiltonian constraint. But at that time, they, they are using ADM variable. They, there's no way to really uh, write explicitly the, the super space and the states and also how, how one exactly replace the Hamiltonian constraint to operators. And, but there was indeed some, some uh, equation called wheeler de Witt equation. Uh, but that equation, if you go into the literature, that equation was a uh, very, comp well, that, that was a not very well defined function because it's, it's very formal. It's used, uh, that was a functional differential equation. The wheeler de Witt equation was a functional uh, differential equation. It's, uh, you know, usually, usually a uh, equation was partial differential equation, but you have never solved a functional partial differential equation. That, that's the equation defined on an infinite dimensional space using functional, uh, using, using functional derivatives instead of partial derivatives. So you can understand that equation is very complicated. Uh, so then the, the um, the uh, um, progress in loop quantum gravity is that one can really uh, write down this constraint and quantize this constraint uh, as operators. And this was, was the work by, by Thomas Thiemann in, in 1997 or 6, I think in 6. So he had a serious paper about how to quantize Hamiltonian constraint. This is something I'm, we, are, we are going to discuss right now. Okay. So again, uh, the way to do is similar as before. So we have the classical expression of Hamiltonian constraint. We are going to discretize. So this is a discrete Hamiltonian constraint. Discretization. And then we are going to quantize. Operate. Okay. So discretization. So this uh, continuous expression is uh, it's a function of x. So discretization is will be um, a, a discrete expression for every vertex. So so firstly, uh, uh, by the way, so so you can see that the Hamiltonian constraint has two terms. So we have also mentioned that the first term is uh, so called the Euclidean term. term. So I will call C0. So I will call this expression C0. And the second term, including the, the minus, overall minus, is the Lorentzian term. Lorentz term. So it's called Lorentz term. And I will call CL. Well, um, I, I, think, I think I have mentioned that why we call the first term Euclidean term. The reason is that suppose we consider Euclidean gravity, and then uh, this beta plus one will become beta minus one, and suppose you take beta equals one, and the second term just disappears. And, and you, for, Euclidean, for Euclidean gravity, you can only keep the first term. That's why we consider uh, first term as the Euclidean, uh, Euclidean term. Yeah? And, and since, since now we are talking about the Lorentzian, Gravity in Lorentzian signature, so we have to add the second term. So that's why the second term is called Lorentz. Okay. So now we are going to just uh, quantize uh, to these two terms in, uh, uh, individually. So firstly, let's let's talk about Euclidean Euclidean term. Euclidean term um, C zero x and this 
dux equals to well um you can you can uh, write this formula in a in a little bit different way in terms of matrix trace and commutator so let me rewrite this formula in, in a different form And here in the numerator, you get a commutator. You can do this. Okay, so this commutator is just a matrix commutator. So here I write FAB, which is just FABJ tau J half. Tau J is, is uh, well, tau J is minus I times the poly matrix. And here, similarly for, for EA, is EA, J. Okay. Oh. okay. And, and now you are going to use and how to, how to relate the, 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 the expedient term in the above and the expedient term in terms of trace and commutator. It's very easy. So you just, uh, for example, for, you can compute the commutator. EA, EB. This is just the E A J E P K Tau J Tau K Commutator. Okay. And you know that using the commutator between poly matrices, you find these these are just the epsilon J K L Tau L Tau L hat. And you get you, you recover this epsilon. And this is the epsilon you have up there. And you have this epsilon here. And also you uh, you, you have to take the trace and you are going to use trace J tau K and this is equal to minus one half minus one half delta J. Okay. And so here, that's why uh, you have a prefactor minus two, and here you get a minus one half. And cancel this minus two, and you should recover this one over half. Okay. So, so this formula are really, really equivalent. Okay, so now uh, the next thing we are going to discretize these two gadgets. So firstly, you have one building block, which is just a curvature. This is a curvature of, um, of uh, as, uh, Ashtag the lateral connection. This is the curvature of the A of the Ashtag connection. And the second gadget is this uh, commutator E divided by square root of Q. All right. So, okay. So, here, um, so first, so at the beginning, before uh, Thomas Kiemann. Uh, made this progress. So one always has some puzzle about quantization of this operator because it has a square root of determinant Q in the in the numerator, in the denominator. Okay, so that makes puzzle. Why? The reason why it makes puzzle because um, suppose you have a determinant Q, okay, and then the, the, the naive guess that you have to replace this determinant Q by the volume operator, right? by the volume, volume operator. Okay. But now you have one over determinant Q, and then it means uh, you, you have to replace by one over uh, volume operator. However, we know the eigenvalue of the volume operator contains zero. Right? So you, you may have whether this proposal works, but the reason, but but this proposal does not work uh, because um, because the volume operator contains zero. So volume operator, the eigenvalue of the volume operator contains zero, and then it, once the eigenvalue uh, becomes zero, this, this term just diverges, this quantity just diverges. Since uh, it diverges, it diverges if volume goes to zero. Okay. And we call some divergence. So definitely you don't want divergence in, in your operator. You have to change the proposal. So that's that's why um, uh, 
uh, there's a different proposal by Thomas, which is usually called Tima's trick. Tima's trick. Let me let me put this trick in a in a lemma. So you get a different uh, you get a different expression for for this one over uh, determinant Q. Well, including the square, including the um, the commutator of E. Lemma is that uh, you have a, another relation. You can replace uh, this quantity by a commutator, by commutator, commutator by a Poisson bracket between uh, A between the connection and the volume. A, a region volume of any region for for any uh, for any region f such that x belongs uh, any region r such that x belongs to r so x is the label for for the connection this equals to minus eight kappa theta psi but the price here you have to include a sign. So, so this sign means that if you are in the left hand uh, frame, left hand uh, basis uh, is minus one. If you are in the right hand basis, uh, it's plus one. And then multiply the quantity you want, you want to express. Determinant Q. And there's epsilon A, B, C. So this is epsilon uh, symbol. So this is called Tima strip. Okay. You can see that the right hand side it is the quantity you want to you want to express. Okay. So this quantity this is the right hand side. So up to epsilon, you can always move this epsilon to the left. Yeah, and uh, up to some numerical factor and a sign, this is just equal to the uh, Poisson bracket between uh, connection and uh, and volume. Uh, there is no one over volume involved in this expression. Yeah. And when you quantize, you just uh, replace these Poisson brackets by a commutator. So it's completely well defined. So you are not going to involve any divergence because this expression has no one over volume involved. So this uh, this trick is is very widely used when you when you uh, considering quantization of various operators in uniform gravity because whenever you see some one over determinant Q, you can always use this kind of expression to replace this one over determinant Q to be some commutator, like this commutator between A and B. Okay, so so now let's prove this. Prove this. Uh, prove this uh, relation. Um, yeah, let me see how much. Well, it's already 12:30. So I'm. Let me just stop here. Um, let's skip. Let Let's move this approved to the next lecture. Then. Okay. So any question about this lecture? Okay. So if there, huh? there's a question. Yeah, maybe about a property that. You didn't mention about area and volume operator at the beginning. Okay. Uh, uh, I am wondering, are they are this operator a gauge invariant? Oh yes, they are. They are right. They are they are gauge invariant. Definitely. Uh, okay. so Can we see that easily from yes. from the formula? Yes. So so from yeah, for for here for the volume operator. So let me measure that. Uh, the volume operator is gauge invariant. Yeah, namely, this volume operator um, leave this uh, gauge invariant superspace invariant. So it it can be it can act on. It is well defined on the gauge invariant uh, superspace. So super space of gauge invariant function. So it can act on gauge invariant functions and the result is still gauge invariant. The reason is that uh, the gauge transformation uh, act on the index ijk. So it it's give you a rotation, rotation uh, respect to index ijk. But this rotation is also go it also act on this epsilon, but epsilon is the invariant. 
Okay. And the area operator is the same because area is like p square operator, pi, pi operator and square root. And the, um, the gauge transformation is going to rotate to this index i. So, um, so it, it leaves this p square invariant. Okay. Okay. So you can. So this is just uh, um, considering the commutation relation. Uh, well, you can. Uh, so this is the, the the easiest way to see uh, just the rotating this, uh, this piece, gate transformation of the piece, and or you can also check the commutation relation, the commutator between between those operators and the Gauss constraint and the uh, discrete Gauss constraint, either Poisson bracket or or uh, quantum commutation relation is the same. It's the same thing. You can you can, yeah, you can quantize the Gauss constraint uh, and compute the commutator between Gauss constraint and the volume operator for area operator. You will get zero. The reason is exactly the same as I, I mentioned. So the, the, the Gauss constraint generate gauge transformation which act on those index IJK just give you rotation. Okay. Okay. Um, for the lemma at, at the end, uh, at the end, no. yeah, yeah, I just get the 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 lemma the the lemma the Timothy trick, uh -huh. the Timothy trick. I just get the why why that you walk is that because the every APC can give and if a reduction like the this one could well in on the numerator, right? Uh, let's say again on the numerator on what? Uh, I I just guess uh, why it works is you just because the F the ABC how the E A B you can give a reduction like the determinant you give a reduction like the determinant determinant E square so then you can cancel the the determinant Q square in the new dominant that they work. Oh no, right? it's not a cancellation. No, it's not. Uh, it's not exactly a uh, cancellation. So, mm -hmm. um, um, so it's not. So I'm I'm going to prove this expression next time. So okay. you, can, you can also try try yourself and compute the Poisson bracket on the left. That's something you are going to get. Okay. Yeah. If you if you want if you are curious, you can just try it out. Um, it's really just straightforward computation. Compute the Poisson bracket. And, and uh, of course, next time I'm going to show you uh, how, how it works. Yeah. So it's not really a cancellation of the divergence. It's no, it's not a cancellation of the divergence. It's, it's just uh, you can rewrite this expression as a Poisson bracket. That's, that's why it's called a good, uh, called a trick, called Timmons trick. Because this is uh, usually uh, what we, we use to express this kind of expression with one over determinant Q in terms of Poisson bracket. Okay. Get, uh, we can we are able to quantize the Poisson bracket to get a well-defined expression with no divergence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, any other question? All right, so if not, then uh, let's stop. See you on Friday. Sure.